<laughs> this is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Welcome to Covered in Pet Hair, a boozy web show for pet lovers on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Isabel alvarez Arada, and today I have the pleasure of having a drink and a chat with the CEO of a pet food company. I'll tell you all about him and introduce you as soon as we come back from these messages from our sponsors. Welcome back to Covered in Pet Hair. I'm your host, Isabel alvarez Arada, and today I have the pleasure of having a drink and a chat with a pet parent, an inventor, a researcher contributor at Entrepreneur Magazine. He's a foodie, a box wine drinker, a craft beer aficionado. He's a Bitcoin exchange founder, a Las Vegan, husband to Anna, dog dad to Sherlock, currently out to improve the world's pet food as CEO of Yum Woof, natural pet food. Welcome, Jaren Lucas. Thank you, great to Yay! be here. It's so good to have you on the show. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, most people watching right now probably don't know that we had to, that we spent about like four times, uh, you know, going at, repeating that and, uh, you know, saying the company name. But uh, yeah, we got it that time and uh, we're, we're ready to go. Yes. Yum. Woof. Woof, yeah, woof, woof. Like right. a bark. It's funny. It, it's funny. We, uh, I'll, I'll look at like what people are searching uh, around our brand name on uh, like some things that Google has uh, for analytics and like a lot of people type in Yum Wolf and I'm just yes. like you know I love our name Yum Wolf but sometimes I'm like uh, you know maybe we could have made it a little easier on people. You know what's really funny my husband always like we talk about my shows and who's going to be on a guest and blah 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 and today when I told him the name of your, of your pet food company he said for the game, he sh he's like, you should do something about wolves. And I was like, no, it's not woof. It's, it's not wolf. It's woof, like woof, woof, woof. And this is a thing. I want everybody to know that English is actually my second language. I was born in Ecuador and I speak Spanish. Uh, it was my first language. So there are times when I really think I'm saying something and I'm, my mouth is saying something different. So sometimes you might pick up on an accent and that's because English, was my second language. It's my dominant language now. I'm in the US, I speak it constantly, but there's still that kind of little bit of accent that comes out every once in a while. So wolf and woof I honestly are different. would not have known uh, had you not said that, but uh, my wife is Mexican and uh, I actually just came from downstairs where we were watching a new uh, uh, kind of like Mexican teleserie that just came out. So yeah, I've been I've been practicing. We can do the second part of this uh, conversation in Spanish. Before so we go any further, I want to introduce our drinking game. Anybody participating in our drinking game tonight, anytime you hear this word, make sure you take a drink of whatever it is you're enjoying. But please be over age wherever it is that you're watching from and make sure you always drink responsibly. Please never drink and drive. So what are you drinking tonight, Jaren? You know, we decided to have a little celebration yesterday. Um, we had an offer uh, by an investor on Yum Wolf. So uh, we, we pulled out this uh, little bottle of champagne here. So I'm drinking uh, the leftovers. So nice. How, how about you? I am having a Bacardi pre-made rum punch with a very bright color in celebration of springtime. I love it. it spring is here. Yes. Cheers. To that. Could not Cheers. Be <laughs> I haven't <laughs> actually tried this yet, so I'm going to show you the the can. It comes in a can, and it is a rum punch made by Bacardi. And I spent my honeymoon with my husband in the uh, French Antilles. So they drink rum punch there. So we were kind of picky about our rum punch. We have our guava berry liqueur that we brought from the islands that we always get when we go back to islands. So I'm gonna try this and see if it's a contender in the world of rum punch. So give me a second. Let's see how it is. It's good, it's good. It's yeah, different. I'm getting like a six out of 10 vibe. It's a six out of 10 compared to the St. Martin rum punch. But the thing about rum punch is that rum punch is like different, they have different recipes throughout all of the Caribbean, right? So this is a really good drink, but it does not speak to the rum punch that I'm used to, but I'm gonna 
have to take another sip to make sure. Before we continue to uh, talk about yum woof, I'm gonna say woof so that I can make sure that I don't say wolf. Um, I want to play a game with you. All right, let's do it. All right, so you say you're a foodie. Yes. And I'm sure you've heard of the game Shag Mary Kill. Have you ever heard of that game? Of course. Of course. It, okay. Several times. Several. You've played it several times. Well, I'm not going to make you play that game, but I always take inspiration from fun stuff, especially in the drinking game world, and make it pet related. So this game is called Eat, Feed, Toss. Eat, Feed, Toss. Okay. I'm going to give you three options of food, and you're going to tell me if you would eat it, if you would feed it to Sherlock, or if you would toss it in the garbage can. Okay, I like this. All right, so first one. Chicken, steak, bacon. Eat, feed, toss. Chicken, steak, bacon. Who is getting the chicken? Who's getting the steak? And who's getting the bacon? We're going to toss the chicken because chicken's okay. gross. We're tossing the chicken. Uh, I know it's a lean meat, very healthy. Um, but we're going to give Sherlock the steak because I am on keto and bacon has a lot of fat. And you know, I can't do that to Sherlock. Sherlock, maybe he'll get like a little a little uh, piece. He might get okay. a little piece. Okay, okay. Yeah, we don't want him to get pancreatitis. So we'll give him the steak and let you have the fatty <laughs> bacon. All right, perfect. And the chicken goes in the trash. All right, next one. You have to choose who's gonna, you, what you're gonna eat, what you're gonna feed to Sherlock and what you're gonna toss in the bin to, to yeah. make it easy. Uh, Beyond Meat Burger, Portobello Burger, Black Bean Burger. Mm, this is a good one. So, uh, but also a lot easier than the last one because <laughs> uh, we are for sure throwing the Beyond Meat Burger in the trash. That is, we're taking all that that uh, potato, uh, uh, pea protein, canola oil, and uh, and all the other unhealthy ingredients that are in there, and we're just gonna throw it in the trash and light it on fire. Oh my um, gosh! <laughs> so after that, we have uh, we have the portobello burger. That's gonna go to Sherlock, and uh, I'm probably gonna want to with my uh, check with my pet nutritionist before I do that. But uh, you know, do dogs can eat some portobello, I think. So. Uh, Sherlock's gonna get that one, and um, and then yeah, this bean burger. I'm gonna I'm gonna eat that, and then um, probably just like not be around people for a few hours after, uh, later. I was thinking that if you gave that to Sherlock, we would have to put Sherlock in a room by himself. Yeah, yeah, and uh, <laughs> unfortunately that's gonna be me. All right, I'm so sorry, Anna. This is just hypothetical. I promise. All right, <laughs> next one: kale, spinach, arugula. Man, this is tough because uh, kale has a lot of anti-nutrients and spinach was just discovered to have a leptin that uh, actually crosses the blood-brain barrier. So, um, but uh, we can cook the spinach and, and uh, prevent that. So uh, we are going to, and uh, what was the third one again? Arugula. Oh yeah, well I'm eating the arugula because that's my favorite. Anna hates it, but I love it. So I'm eating <laughs> that. Um, then we got the, the kale and the spinach. We're gonna cook up the spinach for Sherlock and we're gonna throw the kale in the trash. Sorry, kale. Man, I need to do some research. By the way, I love Beyond Burgers. Those are like, cause we don't eat meat here in the house. I mean, we eat chicken, which does suck, but that's like, I don't eat mammals basically. So mm -hmm. chicken's like an option, um, but I do eat a, like a Beyond Burger or Beyond Meat at least once a week. And so I know it's not super healthy, but it's like our cheat thing. It's like our like easy food. So um, now you're killing spinach for me as well. I mean, what is this? Now we're gonna get into the more fancy stuff. Sweetbreads, caviar, foie gras. And for those who don't know what sweetbreads are, sweetbreads yeah. are organ meat. Yeah, organ meat from the thymus glands and pancreas of usually like a calf. Interesting. Well, those are gonna have to go to Sherlock. Um, one of the interesting things that um, you kind of start to learn after you like really dig into like the organs is uh, like eating liver actually help is good for your liver. Eating kidneys are good for your kidneys, lungs, etc. Uh, stay away from brains. But but uh, you know like especially like anyone who's on a whole carnivore diet, it's super important that you eat like every organ. And given that they're carnivores, like you know, you know, 
organ meat. So, uh, and, and uh, I guess it's called sweetbreads. It's called sweetbreads, but sweetbreads are fancy. Like you don't give them sweetbreads. Like sweetbreads are like on fancy restaurant menus as like a, a starter. I think I've had them before, like when I ate meat. I don't remember them being anything to write home about. They were kind of chewy and like, like fried and breaded, I think they were. I can't remember, but I don't remember them being good. But then there's caviar, which I do enjoy, and foie gras, which tastes fine. But I mean, the ethical issue with the foie gras is just so sad. So I don't partake in foie gras, but I have had it many times. I lived in France, so I had I've had foie gras many times, and it tastes good. Yeah, foie gras is delicious. But uh, like you, I uh, I gotta go with the ethical choice here and uh, eat caviar as well. Yeah, caviar with that champagne you're having. Um, okay, next one. <laughs> yeah, cheers. Um, next one, beef tartare, sashimi, or oysters? Mm, oh man, now you're getting really tough here. Well, the beef tartare is gonna go to Sherlock again. Uh, you know, Sherlock loves beef. Uh, we're gonna throw him on a raw food diet for this meal. Uh, the oysters, and then we had uh, the- Sashimi. The, Sashimi, yeah. I mean, I'm gonna have to go with the oysters. That's just like so much more fun and delicious. Well, assuming they're from like north of Virginia, because if you give me an oyster south of Virginia, I'm not eating it. Like oh, the water's too warm, the water's too warm, and the foodborne illness chances are too high for me. Now I learned something today. I promise you I'm like only gonna eat northern uh, hemisphere oysters from now on. You have to, you have to. And they just taste better and they're bigger and they're more delicious. Anyway, last one. This one's really easy, I think. Kraft Singles, Baby Bella Cheese, Vegan Cheese. Ooh, uh, what's Baby Bella Cheese? You know those little red ones in the wax? Oh the yeah. The little circular oh. ones? That, that all day. I mean, I think I gotta throw away two of those. I gotta throw away the Vegan Cheese, Kraft Cheese. Craft singles, American slices, yeah. <laughs> right. And anything made in the 60s, I don't eat it. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just all, all sorts of fakeness and artificial preservatives. It's true. You know? you know what? I use craft singles, and don't kill me because I know this is not healthy, but I use them at, in place of pill pockets because they're cheaper. So I'll make, I'll like get like a quarter of the crap of the slice and I'll wrap my dogs. My, my old dog takes a lot of pills and I'll wrap his pills in there and he loves it. And it's a way cheaper option than pill pockets, which pill pockets are great if you have like a bout of, uh, you know, a UTI and you need it for like two weeks. But this is like, we've been on these pills for years. So like, I can't keep up with the cost of pill pockets for every single day, three times a day. So craft singles, they do the job. And yeah, I would throw them in the bin. Otherwise we're not allowed, like my kid's not allowed to touch that. <laughs> So you can keep the craft singles in the fridge for Sherlock. You can eat the baby Bellas and you'll toss the vegan cheese. I mean, I don't blame you. If you're on keto, why in the world do you even want to go anywhere near vegan cheese? It's true. And I'm, I'm not anti-vegan. Uh, I like, in fact, I move more and more towards keto vegan, especially over lunch. So I'm going to take a break and then we're going to come back and dig into Yum Wolf. Woof, 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 yum, woof, woof, woof. Okay, guys, yum, woof. If I mispronounce that, please forgive me. I promise I'm trying. Hey, but you just gave us our new slogan. Yum, woof, woof, woof. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors. Welcome back to Covered in Pet Hair. I'm your host, Isabel Alvarez Arada, and today I have the pleasure of having a drink with the CEO of a pet food company. So we're going to dig in to his impression of the pet food industry very quickly with three questions. I guess you can call this a game. We'll call it the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I want you to tell me first to start the good things that you have found entering the pet food industry. My answer on this one, I feel like is an obvious one, but it's really the people. And I, you know, I, I went to kind of like my first foray into the pet food industry was uh, with a company that has several products in it. And I was lucky enough to be able to go to the Miami Pet Conference in uh, 2020, right before people stopped being able to travel. I probably got coronavirus on that trip. That's another story. So <laughs> yeah, but you know, I had so much fun and meeting the people there. I mean, just everyone is a legitimate dog owner. Like you don't go into the industry, especially today. And I think we're gonna get into this soon, but 
the people, the origins of the industry, a little murky. But if you look at the people who are in it today, like there isn't anyone who's not trying to make a difference, who doesn't have a dog in themselves. And, and that's really just one of my favorite parts. And, you know, I, I've gone to conferences and FinTech and all sorts of industries. It's just so much more serious. And it, it's not, I feel like in a way you're not helping people. So uh, that's, that's what I love about the pet food industry is like really where it's heading, the people who are doing that. And, and I'm very optimistic that if you look forward 10 years from now, the quality of pet food, pet products is gonna be so much better than it is today. From your lips to God's ears, dude, because seriously, like let's, that brings me to, tell me what the bad, the, like your impression of what's wrong with the pet food industry. I mean, the bad is really all of these giant corporations, uh, to be honest, and and hopefully this changes. But the origins of the pet food industry are are very much pre-science. Like we didn't know anything about science. It's a hundred percent cost based. So meaning. Uh, for the person who's buying a four pound bag of dog food on the shelf, this is not even gonna be the cheapest stuff you can find. Uh, and But let's say it's four pounds for like $8. Well, you gotta ask yourself like, okay, well, the store probably bought that for four and then the manufacturer probably uh, wanted to have like a $2 markup as well. And there's a lot of people to pay. And so what do those ingredients actually cost? And when you get down to it, like, especially when you get to the like very very cheap dry kibble that ingredient cost per pound might be like 25 cents so you got to ask yourself what can you act like what kind of food can you put in a pound of it and make that 25 cents and is that nutritious is it healthy one thing's for sure it's certainly going to include a lot of carbohydrates so uh, dogs are carnivores. Uh, I think that there's plenty of science to show that they can eat 20, 30% of their diet at carbohydrates. Um, you know, I think one of the things that just really upsets me is uh, seeing how poorly that we're able to feed dogs and how like a lot of companies are getting away with that. And, and you know, like it's tough, I get it. Like not everyone can pay for higher end dog food like it, it can be very expensive but um you know i just i just don't i think it's very disingenuous the way that many companies are marketing their food is like for carnivores healthy diet superfood blah 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 and then you look at their first ingredient and it's like worst case scenario it's wheat yeah yeah so tell me the ugly the ugliest thing Ooh, the ugliest. Here, like we're, we're like dropping bombs here. Like tell me something terrible that you've learned that most pet parents probably don't know that's really ugly about the pet food industry. The ugliest is extrusion cooking. And uh, extrusion cooking mix, which is what creates dry kibble. Mixing that with the low quality ingredients I was just talking about. Uh, extruders are the same machines that are used to make cereal. Uh, they are used to make dry kibble and they're also used to make Cheetos. Um, dry kibble is basically Cheetos with vitamins in it. So uh, when you look at this, what, what happens is, and if you saw any of these machines, you would not, you would be like, I am not feeding this to my dog. Like it's just ejecting at a high rate, all these little dry kibble pellets. and. And basically this machine, it has screws in it. So they're pushing the food in and, and all these raw ingredients. So like in the worst case scenario, you have these companies who are feeding, let's say the top ingredients are like uh, soy protein. Soy protein is not good for your dog. Um, maybe you got like a little bit of canola oil. Maybe you got like some wheat gluten in there, like uh, only the bad parts of wheat. And um, I, I don't know, I mean, you know, some, some of these brands, you see like four or five ingredients that are just all high carbohydrates. You push that through an extruder machine, you grind it down, you press it with high heat and uh, cause it's steam. So like high heat, 400, 500 degrees. And, and between the screws and the high heat compression, you're actually breaking all of the nutrients down. So. Before I go into your, the food that you all make, 
tell me about your company. You and your business partners were either in the tech industry and one of them was a chef in New York. And then you all changed careers and here you are. So tell me how that happened. Uh, my, my previous background, I like, I basically, I graduated from Rice University in 2008. I became an investment banker and it was in private equity for four years. Those uh, I like to call my evil days. And luckily I was able to uh, overcome them, become a good person. And uh, I started my first tech company in 2012. It was one of the first Bitcoin exchanges in the US. Uh, we, were one of the, we were one of the first venture capital backed Bitcoin exchanges. We were really trying to bring legitimacy to the space. Um, I was living in New York City at that time and, you know, it, it was a ride. Let me tell you that, um, you know, I sold that company in 2016 and uh, I, through a series of events, will say I, I, you know, I spent a year in meditation uh, through that process. And, uh, you know, I had, I had a, a life experience called uh, the last crypto crash where my net worth just fell incredibly. And uh, through that experience, you know, I, I had had my, my net worth, my personal worth tied so much to my net worth that when that went away, uh, I, I was left kind of exploring who I was. And, and so your meditation and uh, through that, like I, I really came out of it wanting to do something tangible. So tech is all virtual, digital, it does help the world, but um, it's boring it, and it doesn't help the world in the same way as like a tangible product that's physical and a, a clear necessity. Like your dog has to eat food and uh, making sure that they're eating food that's gonna extend their life five years, hopefully, it is like a very, it's a very like worthwhile, noble and fulfilling thing to do. So, you know, we, uh, my, my two co-founders and I, we've been friends for, for 10 years now. And uh, Yo and I have been through a lot together uh, within the tech industry. Uh, Ray, as you mentioned, was a former chef in New York City. That's why our food smells so good. Like it smells like a sweet bread. It's soft and chewy. It, uh, it, it's such a cool product. And like, I, I really have to give him credit for that because uh, he, he brought his extra special love to this product. An another thing is just like, we wanted to start a company as friends together, like have that experience where we could kind of, uh, starting a company is never easy. And uh, I, let me tell you, this was really hard to get off the ground. We've been spending a year and a half on it. Uh, we launched uh, a, a year into starting. So, you know, between the process of just like, getting the product right like um it, it was so hard but so worthwhile too and uh yeah we we launched with it in november 2020 uh you know ba basically we we had amazing sales day one uh, we grew two and a half times faster than we expected and um you know we've really just been ramping up our production and um you know like trying to make customers happy so I, I love this product. I, I feed it to my own dog when I'm not making his own food, but that does get me to it, our next product that we're going to release that I'm uh, honestly just as, or even more excited about. And that's our DIY homemade dog food. Um, it, it's going to be the same base recipe as this, but um, in, in, in a powder format where you can buy your own meat, coconut oil, and egg. So uh, for, you know, we get asked a lot, like, you know, uh, how, you know, uh, do, you, do you have organic eggs? And this unfortunately does not, that would make this prohibitively expensive for right. anyone to buy, including myself. So, you know, we, we wanted to create something where it's like, you can add your organic meat, you can add, so it's add your own uh, meat, eggs, and coconut oil. Coconut oil, I'm a big, big fan of. It's, it's like a big part of this product. This uh, perfect kibble is about 10% coconut oil and uh, there's no other dog food that has like anything like that. When you look at the NIH studies, all the NIH studies conclusively show that it helps with brain cognition in dogs, um, also epilepsy for dogs with epilepsy, it helps with energy, um, and basically it helps with dental health, and basically there are different parts of coconut oil that have these benefits, but like the last 
the lauric acid in coconut oil uh, is what like primarily helps with dental oil. It may have anti-cancer properties because of the similar antimicrobial stuff. I'm a big fan of coconut oil, but also when I'm thinking about longevity, metabolism, I, I um, it almost makes me sad that I don't see more people searching because I'll, I'll do like my little analyses to see like what people are searching for. And not that many people are searching for like how to make my dog live longer or how to improve my dog's metabolism. And that one I'll give people because most people don't really, you hear metabolism and you're like, yeah, I didn't pay attention in high school chemistry. Or by <laughs> that was certainly me. And, and Same. You know, yeah. And now, now I'm like the opposite, like all those things I was supposed to be learning then I'm like learning now, but you know, when you think about metabolism, doing things that help your dog's metabolism gives them more energy, but it also is a hundred percent directly correlated with anti-aging. So, uh, you know, ultimately we all want our dogs to live longer. And I think people get caught up in the very like near term now of like, you know, I, I don't know, everyone's different, but I, I'm definitely always thinking about like, how can I get my dog to live to be 20? Yeah. And, and um, you know, maybe, maybe he, his like ancestors have a 13 year average lifespan. So, you know, a uh, big fan of coconut oil, definitely recommend feeding a little bit of that to your dog every day. And, and, um, but, you know, ultimately, like, I, I want to see more people making dog food at home. And what I can tell you is like, what I might consider to be the best product out there right now, you got to mix in 10 ingredients. It's so, such a pain. I'm like, I'm not buying all these ingredients and then mixing them in just so I can make homemade dog food every two weeks. Like that's a lot of work. It so we, want, we wanted to make it really easy and it's all the dehydrated ingredients that your dog needs to get all the antioxidants, blueberries, stuff like that. But allowing you on a budget to actually like throw in the meat of your choice and the, the coconut oil that is so good for dogs and the eggs, like organic, if you want, like you can still like not break the bank. And so that that's really like been the vision. And uh, with all the stuff you see right now, especially on TikTok with like you know, people making these really cool videos of like homemade dog food and they throw in some quail food, quail eggs and, you know, like some seaweed, um, seaweed, it also very good for dogs. But um, it, before you go feed your dog some seaweed, go Google that because there are specific types to feed your dog. The, but but I, I just think what's happening with that trend is so exciting. It's literally for foodies like you and yes, me. Yes, for and, sure. And so it's like offering that to your dog, but like in a way that's like maybe not going to take up your entire Sunday. Yeah, for sure. I mean, sustainability is huge because like for us, we used to feed our dogs a homemade raw food that we used a packaged powdered thing that we added to it, but it was way more than three ingredients. And we did use coconut oil. We used raw, um, we used eggs and we used raw beef, uh, ground beef, and we could source it based on our budget, right? Uh, either we were getting stuff from Costco or we were getting like free range eggs from like the farmer's market. If we could like source a lot of them, enough of them to make it worth the expense. So we definitely had a lot of control in the quality of the things but it took time. And so when we came, we became parents and we had four kids, I mean, sorry, four dogs and one baby, like all of a sudden we didn't have the time to be doing the food prep every week and the freezer space to be doing stuff. So it really becomes a challenge when it's not easy and it is a trend for sure, but it's not an attainable trend for a lot of people just because of time and budget. I get the feeling that this is like a really like a heart focused kind of on entrepreneurship. This is kind of like you have a dog, you get an interest in what they're eating. It kind of turns into a career and aspiration to be, build this brand. And so where do you guys, where are you right now? Where do you see yourselves going? I think you got it spot on. And I appreciate you noticing that because I definitely do think about this from that element. Like, um, you know, when you're running a business, um, you know, you're, you're always balancing, like, how do you make the numbers work with like in, in at least this case, some people are like only that, but, uh, you know, you're also thinking about like, um, how do I help people? And, and with us, like, I'm, I'm really trying to figure out how we can make 
a billion dollar impact that legitimately improves the lives of people and specifically their dogs. But at the same time, like not necessarily just creating a bunch of products that people don't need in order to achieve that. Like we want to do something that's actually going to be good for them. And that that's really where I get to this fresh food thing. Um, you know, this is a great product, don't get me wrong. And for people who like don't want to have a bunch of uh, their refrigerator space taken up by dog food, like this is it. But but ultimately there's nothing better you can do for your dog than make them food at home with fresh ingredients. And, uh, and the same for you, like, um, and take this from someone who like used to have the worst diet ever. And, you know, I mean, uh, uh, what, when you really, really look into it, like the reason why literally 50% of Americans have diabetes or pre-diabetes is because we're eating high sugar foods that are highly processed. You know, humans have maybe eaten this way with like higher carbs for 12,000 years since the agricultural revolution. That's uh, only 5% of the modern homo sapien human history. So when you think about dogs, like dogs have only eaten this way for like 80 years. Wow. And, and so they're not biologically adapted to it. And, and so companies are just getting away with feeding dogs 50 to 70 percent and here's why because I confront this every day I confront this struggle head on those are the cheap ingredients that allow you to have high margins so right. you know, we we have accepted and honestly sometimes struggle with how what our margins are because we've included these ingredients yeah. but like in the end it's like that that's just like what really frustrates me about the pet food industry today it's the thing that I number one want to see today and so like my question is you, you know and you were asking about like the change that like we would like to make it it really is how do we get more paw parents feeding their dogs fresh cooked homemade food I think having the two products is perfect because for me right now in my stage in life with these two young children, my husband traveling as much as he does, I could not take on making, even with three ingredients, I couldn't take it on. And a lot of pet parents aren't going to take that on. One, one other thing we're thinking about doing, and if anyone listening is interested in doing this, please uh, send me an email. We're, we're thinking about taking the DIY homemade food and using that as a base for uh, a people to be able to sell uh, homemade dog food in their local community. Ooh. And so we're thinking about creating uh, like, you know, if we, if we took all the raw ingredients for making dog food this way and marked it up 50%, um, we would still be half the price of farmer's dog and Ollie. So, uh, oh, you know, wow. I think it would be a great way, especially like given where the whole economy is at right now, uh, to kind of allow people to, you know, create their own business out of their own home and help spread that message of, um, you know, basically like improving pet nutrition across their community. Okay. So I used to be a pet sitter. I used to have a pet sitting business, um, in Northern Virginia, COVID made us, uh, make the decision of getting out of that industry just because it was, we were shut down for the past year. Um, uh, many pet sitting businesses who are still hanging on are struggling. So that might be something that a at home pet sitter might be able to take on to add to their service offerings and to increase their revenues. Great suggestion. I'm definitely going to look into that. Absolutely. So tell us, how can our viewers and listeners get in touch with you, get um, on your website? Uh, where can we find the products? Tell us everything. Yeah, uh, you can get in touch with me over Instagram. I'm Jaren Lucas and uh, our company is Yum Wolf, Y-U-M-W-O-O-F. <laughs> and you are also at yumwolf.com, right? Yeah, thank you. That's right. So I've got to wrap this up. I want to propose a toast to you. Jaren, for being on the show, thanks so much for giving us a lesson in pet nutrition and human nutrition while you were at it. I'm, I'm taking notes. Cheers. Thanks for having me. It, it's been fun. Awesome. Cheers. Also to our executive producer, Mark Winter, thank you for making this show possible. And to our viewers on uh, YouTube and our listeners on Pet Life Radio, here's to you for spending your time with us. And here's to a life covered in pet hair because there's no better way to live. Cheers. If you want to learn more about Covered in Pet Hair, please visit CoveredInPetHair.com or PetLifeRadio.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.